Indonesia, a place of beauty, of life, and of possibilities. As home to the infamous Ring of Fire, Indonesia holds nearly 40% of the world's geothermal reserves. It is no wonder, then, that we are one of the world's leading producers of geothermal energy. Their capacity at 1948 megawatts were only behind the United States, who are leading at 3600 megawatts. But don't let these numbers fool you. The near 2000 megawatts is only a fraction of Indonesia's total. According to the Asian Development Bank, or the ADB for short, Indonesia's estimated potential clocks in at a staggering 29,000 megawatts, or 29 gigawatts, the most out of any other country in the world. And keep in mind that a single gigawatt is enough to power around 500,000 homes. With this much untapped energy, it should have been possible for Indonesia to make the transition from fossil fuels to renewable energy, and a long time ago at that. This would also have been a step in achieving an SDG level of 7, which sadly Indonesia has not yet reached. One of the reasons we aren't exploiting the mountains of energy we have is because it is still too great a risk. Exploration by itself is extremely dangerous, and the results it may yield might not always be up to expectations. There is no guarantee that drilling through the earth will get us the heat flow and the temperature depth that we were aiming for originally. Before drilling, we usually predict heat flow and temperature at depth using a physics-based model. And these models were good, don't get me wrong, but what they lacked were complete accuracy and long-term sustainability. They would also need to be constantly calibrated as new data is collected to maintain an effective prediction capability, which made performing slash simulating real-time drilling very taxing. But what if there was a way to skip the calibration process, a way that is both effective and long-lasting? And what if all that work could be done by computers and machines, actively learning from our mistakes and perfecting our techniques? Well, this is what we call the machine learning approach. Machine learning isn't exactly new. It's something that's been around for years, something that's being used in our daily lives, but it's something that remains relatively unexploited in geothermal exploration. Machine learning allows computers to learn from data and improve their performance as they learn. This can be used to determine the geothermal areas that yield the most profit, predict problems, and mitigate risks, financial or otherwise. So, how does it work? First, we gather data. The data gathered comes from past geothermal exploration that's relevant to the problem at hand. In this case, our data is temperature and pressure. Then we pre-process the data. This step is all about cleaning it. Then we convert the data into a machine-readable format by encoding it, a process in which we represent all types of data numerically. Afterward, we split the data 70-30 between training and testing sets. For the third step, we train the model. Because the value needs to be predicted, we use supervised learning. The type of algorithm being used is linear regression. Linear regression is a process used for estimating the relationships among variables. Here, one of the variables is independence, which is temperature and pressure, and the other variable is dependence, which is depth and flow rate. So we've got two types of data. We've got real data, which comes from past exploration and experience, and we've got test data, which, as its name implies, is used for testing and experimentation. The data we input is processed by the algorithm. For temperature, the result is geothermal depth prediction. And for pressure, the result is geothermal flow rate prediction. And then we plot in the graph. And the results look a bit like this. Pressure is observed to increase with temperature. Higher pressure causes increased flow rate, whereas temperature increases with depth. The power generated at the turbine and the grid is parabolic. Power produced is considerably high at moderate temperature. Next, we test the model. We validate what's already been trained. If the results are unsatisfactory, the model needs to be improved and retrained. Remember that practice makes perfect. So, what kind of benefits are there to be had from a machine learning approach? Well, as we now know, machine learning produces reliable results and improves performance prediction. Training the model before data will produce more accurate results, specifically to predict at any given temperature or pressure just how much power both the grid and the turbine can produce. Through this, we'll be able to know the location that holds the most geothermal potential. The exploitation of fossil fuels has gone on for long enough. With a machine learning approach, we can mitigate risks to scale up geothermal power. The time has come for Indonesia to make the transition to a more sustainable energy source to power up the nation.